Hey guys, um, just wanted to kind of check in with everybody. Um, we are kind of moving into putting our pieces together now. So I know I've been posting a lot of videos that aren't me, but um, I feel like if other people are explaining it better and there's going to be a better quality video for you and something um, readable, um, it's better for me to post those kinds of videos than necessarily something that I'm showing you. Um, for the most part, I can see the quiz scores, guys. They, they look good, um, but the problem is for some reason the emails didn't attach to them and uh, Dummy Me didn't put a, a, a spot for you to put your name. So what I am going to ask is everybody just go back and click all their answers again and uh, go back in that document and um, put their name. Um, so it should connect your email this time. I also have a spot for your name. And like I said, if you put the same answers in, you'll get the exact same score. Otherwise, you can just send me the results if you have the results. If for some reason it released it, because it won't let me release the scores either. Um, so I'm having lots and lots of problems with that. Um, so I'm really sorry to ask this, but if you guys could please um, retake the quiz, I would be much appreciative of it. And I'm just going to say if you guys could get that in by the end of the week, um, that would be fantastic. I would really appreciate it. Um, so the quiz covered nouns, verbs, um, modifiers, and agreement. So we have covered all of those concepts as of now. So you have now covered all the different types of nouns, um, all the different kinds of verbs, including, um, I think I put a, a video on modals, um, but if I didn't, modals are just like words that make a sentence conditional, which is like should, could, would. So it doesn't make it a factual statement. It's something that could happen. It's potential um, or conditional in nature. Um, and of course, once you have um, nouns and verbs, of course, you have modifiers, which are those um, adjectives for nouns and adverbs for verbs. So just modifying sentences and modifying concepts within the sentence. Um, and it's just those extra words. It's not necessarily the subject or the verb is of a sentence, but it's modifying those concepts. Um, and of course, we had agreement. Um, now, the first document I did provide for you, um, I think it was at the end of last week. I want to say I, I posted it for Friday, um, is the review notes for agreement. Yes, I know it looks like a lot. Um, but I had to bring, break down the entire concept of agreement into hopefully bite-sized pieces. Um, and it does say this on here, but um, all of the numbers are the actual rules and all of the bullet points are my extra information for you in case you are um, still struggling or you're not really sure how to um, put it. It's just like little extra bits, so hopefully it can smooth out some of those issues. Um, and you're welcome to use this as much as you need to, but eventually you should be pretty familiar with most of this um, if you're not already. Um, I'm also kind of gearing up. We're, we're starting to talk about sentences. So this week uh, the goal is to look at what is a complete sentence, which you should have done at some point on Monday. Um, I'm posting this video hopefully late Monday, so um, it'll be available for you late Monday into Tuesday. Um, we also are going to be talking about, of course, run-ons and fragment sentences. So remember that a fragment, or well, a complete sentence has three parts. It has a subject, which can be a um, noun or a pronoun. Um, it can be both. It can be a compound where it says, you know, the band and I, it's still, you know, an, a subject. It's a whole set, um, but it, that is the subject of the sentence. Um, it'll have a verb, whatever type of verb you have to have to complete the sentence, and it'll have a complete thought. So a subject, a verb, and a complete thought. Every single sentence will have those three parts. Um, once we kind of get familiar with that, um, you're going to kind of notice that there are basically four ways to screw up a sentence. And just that's a basic, simple sentence, and you can do it with other sentences as well. But the basic way to screw up a sentence, there's four. Um, three of them are categorized as fragment sentences. 
So you can forget one of the three parts that make a sentence. So you can forget to add a verb, forget to add a subject, and, or forget to have a complete thought or just not have a complete thought. So if you're missing any of those three parts, it's a fragment sentence. So there's three ways to do it wrong. And there's also run-on sentences. Run-on sentences are basically sentences that are formatted to where you have multiple sentences written as one sentence, um, which again, you should have already watched the um, Khan, uh, Khan Academy videos, which do a fantastic job of showing you those things. But I just wanted to break it down and just have those basic parts for you pulled out just so we're all clear that a complete sentence has a subject, a verb, and a complete thought. How you mess that up is if you don't have one of those three things or you have multiple sets of those things, not grammatically um, separated in some way. So for um, fragment sentences, there are three ways to fix it. If it's missing a subject, add a subject. If it's missing a verb, add a verb. And if it's not a complete thought, add it to an additional um, sentence that you have, or you'll have to add some more parts to a sentence to make it a complete thought. Um, but those are the three ways to correct a fragment sentence, and there are also three ways to fix a run-on sentence. The first one is the simplest of the three. If it's two sentences, like grammatically it has subject, verb, and complete thought, subject, verb, and complete thought, make it two sentences. That's the simplest way to do it. But of course, sometimes we want, you know, some little Mm, little, little sass in there, a little extra flavor. So you can actually um, do two other things to fix it where you leave it as one sentence, but you grammatically show that they're two separate independent clauses. And we're going to get into clauses a little bit later, um, probably sometime this week, potentially early next week. Um, so you can make it two sentences, you can use um, a comma and what are called coordinating conjunctions, which they're easy to remember. You can remember the acronym FANBOYS. So F for A uh, and N nor B but O or Y yet and S so. So FANBOYS. Um, those are again coordinating conjunctions. They coordinate two parts of a sentence. They show you how they're related and that is to fix run-ons. You can add a comma and one of those coordinating conjunctions and it fixes your problem. That replaces your period between the two sentences. You can also do a semicolon. Um, so if two sentences are fairly related, which would probably be the issue if you're writing a run-on sentence, you can actually just replace um, the coordinating conjunction and a comma with a semicolon, or you can replace um, a period between two sentences with a semicolon if the sentences are related. Um, and I will be posting all of those general rules here. This talks about what a complete sentence is and how you form one. This talks about the issues that you can possibly have. So what are the two types? And it breaks down the two types and how what they are and how to fix them. Um, so I am going to give you notes for a lot of these sections, guys. Um, you should be taking your own notes or getting some stuff from the videos, but this is just to kind of hit the high notes and make sure you have something that you can put your, um, put your mouse on, I guess, not your hands on, but your mouse on, um, that is for you that you can use for your um, additional resources or help. Um, remember this week that I am asking you to take your introduction letter and first... I want you to find all the subjects, not all the nouns and pronouns. I want you to find just the subjects of the sentence. I want you to put that in one color. I don't care if you highlight it. I don't care if you change the text color, whatever makes you happy. If you want to underline it in a particular color, you can do that as well. But I want you to note all of the subjects in a particular color or fashion. Second, I want you to find all the verbs that match that subject. So if we're looking for a subject, a verb, and a complete thought, first we've got to find the subject, then we need to find the verb. So whatever verb goes with that particular subject, mark that in a second color. Third, I want you to go through and see if you can pick out and identify, highlight, underline, whatever in a third color, or you can just highlight the whole thing. Um, tell me if it's a fragment or a run-on. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is once you 
find your subjects, find your verbs, find your run-on and uh, fragment sentences. I'm going to ask you to go back and fix your run-on and fragment sentences. Um, that'll be the next thing I ask of you. So that's going to be your work for Monday and Tuesday. If you haven't already done your Monday work, which is uh, watch the videos, um, find your subjects and verbs. Um, there's no time like the present. Um, but there's also, of course, tomorrow, and I don't have everything due until Friday, just to give you a little extra time in case you have questions, in case you need a little bit more time on something. It'll give you plenty of time to do it. Um, the reason I'm doing this with your introduction letters, guys, is because the best way for you to internalize this grammar, not just listen to me tell you about it or listen to these videos, um, is for you to apply it to your own writing. Um, that's the best way to fix your grammar is to apply it to your own writing because you see what you're doing wrong or um, what you're doing right and you can go from there and see what you really need to focus on. Um, because I can focus on everything or I can focus on nothing and neither way does that help you. Um, but you can focus on what you need to focus on by fixing your own mistakes rather than me fixing it um, or a classmate fixing it. The best way to do it is for you to fix your own grammatical issues. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. That's the game plan. Um, I'm probably at some point this week I'm thinking about asking you guys to check out the subject verb agreement as well. I'll let you know if I decide to do that for sure. Um, but right now, I, I don't really have time. But we are going to try to talk about um, sentence types this week and sentence structure. Um, I want to talk maybe again about clauses toward the end of the week or the beginning of next week. And I want to start hitting um, commas and semicolons pretty soon. So that should take care of the majority of grammar mistakes that I see as an English teacher. Um, so that'll be your subject verb agreement, your fragment sentences, and um, your comma issues. So those are the three biggest mistakes I see as an English teacher. So I should actually be able to hit most of your writing issues pretty early in the semester, which I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that you guys are going to be able to internalize these skills because not only will we be able to use that on the ACT, but you'll be able to use it in your English classes and your science classes and your math classes, any class that's going to ask you to write. And if you plan to go on college to college, um, that's every class. They will ask you to write something at some point and they do expect you to use proper grammar. So um, hopefully this will be something you can take with you um, far, far beyond this class and not just on the ACT. Um, as always, uh, guys, please keep in contact if you have any problems. Um, and I'm sorry for any technical difficulties I've been causing lately, like the quiz incident. Um, but other than that, um, please, please let me know. Um, I'll have your grades pretty accurate by the end of the week. The only thing I haven't um, put up so far is your... Um, your introduction letters. Everything else should be accurate in uh, PowerSchool as of today, Monday. Um, now, as things start to become due and whatnot, like obviously check in, make sure that everything's correct. Your grades will always be in PowerSchool. They're not going to be on Google Classroom. I may put the point value on Google Classroom, but I'm not going to put the, uh, your grades in on uh, Google Classroom. I'm going to just put them in on PowerSchool because, quite frankly, I'm lazy and I don't want to have to put your grades in twice, so they will be in PowerSchool where the official grades need to be. Um, and again, I know I keep saying this, but please let me know if you have any problems. You guys have been excellent about doing that. Um, thank you for taking your bell work seriously. I do appreciate that as well. I do read them. I do get um, feedback from them. And I do uh, change my lesson plans accordingly. And I try to incorporate your thoughts and ideas and uh, fix any misunderstandings. Um, I'm trying to um, work towards incorporating a couple of games for you guys and uh, whatnot. I'm trying. Um, but especially with the storm and stuff, it was hard for me to kind of get things out to you um, in a timely fashion the last um, the last week. So this week we're going to try to power through. I'm going to try to get some stuff up for you guys to practice with, some games, not just boring like, you know, paper pencil work or just typing kind of stuff. I want to give you some things that are a little bit more fun. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that'll go well. Uh, over the next couple of days. I'm going to look for some stuff and get some stuff posted for you. Um, 
I hope you're all doing well. Again, let me know if you have any problems. Um, I've really been enjoying having this class so far. Um, so let me know if there's anything I can do for you guys. Be good.